Hey, thanks for watching Numbskull News. And today, I want to get back into the UNC crap. Getting back into it. I don't really want to. I don't want to keep beating this thing like it's a dead horse. The problem is the horse ain't dead. It's very much alive and running around the pen. So, I every once in a while, I got to retouch on this thing. UNC. The word around the campfire, the speculation is that the ACC will be rebuilt around UNC. And, uh, yeah, I'm here to tell you that ain't going to happen. But first, let me break down some, some reporting over the last month or so about UNC, about realignment, and about the big two. Now... If you read things like the Bleacher Report, 24-7 Sports, things of that nature, what you're going to hear is that uh, UNC is the most attractive property in realignment to the big two. They basically cite the same person. It all comes from the same place in Ross Dillinger, where he calls UNC the linchpin of realignment. Now, there's been slight changes slight in reporting and facts that have come out like the uh, board of governors of Carolina now all realignment with Carolina public universities UNC and NC State they have to go through the board of governors the board of governors of course is controlled by the legislature of North Carolina and the top legislator there doesn't want to see UNC leave the ACC. As a matter of fact, uh, the state of North Carolina has invested millions of dollars in keeping the corporate offices of the ACC in Carolina, North Carolina. As a matter of fact, the governor himself of North Carolina doesn't want to see a world where UNC and NC State are in are in different conferences. So if you ask the question, are the two tied together? Yeah. Now, Wake Forest can do whatever it wants to do. Duke can do whatever it wants to do. But the two, those two big public universities, they're tied together. And a lot of people have speculated, well, they'll go together to the SEC. <sighs> well, first off, let, let's go with this Ross Dillinger stuff. Because all the reporting... You know, Ross Dillinger puts out an article and then everybody else branches off of that. So it's all coming off of essentially one source. And whatever, and that, and Ross Dillinger gets it from, you know, one or two people, maybe within the SEC, that this is the case. Maybe another person or two inside the Big Ten. I'm not saying he's not connected. I'm not saying he doesn't know people on the inside, of, of course. But, my contention has always been, well, where does ESPN and Fox stand on this? Because there's no been no reporting on that. However, a month ago in Sports Illustrated, I won't say direct report. Let's say indirect. Where they speculated, well, the market may uh, keep the big two from a whole lot of further expansion. Do, they, do their media partners really want to dish out $100 million more a year for another school to come in. SI, the writer there, said, well, probably not. And they kind of speculated that maybe UNC would be left out of further Big Ten and SEC expansion. Look, where does this all lead to? That all funnels down into the speculation going on now where it may be really tough for UNC to get out of the ACC so they'll just stay there and rebuild it and they should be able to get the same kind of media deal that the Big 12 has. For what? I mean, after Florida State and Clemson and I still believe Miami would probably bolt too. They may get the okay from the, the matter of fact, we have reporting that Fox is on board with Miami going to the Big Ten. So that's more than I've ever heard 
about Fox being cool with UNC or ESPN being cool with UNC coming to their two big conferences that they're paying a shit ton of money for. I think it's funny that we start off, they're the linchpin, but the market. Ah. And then, this, then what's the true facts of what's going on in the political sphere of North Carolina with the Board of Governors? And then we come to this. It seems like a big, weird backpedal in a way. When now we're coming to, oh, they'll just stay in the ACC and rebuild it. Here's the thing. No one wants to believe the Big 12 is an alternative. Like a real, legit alternative. You know, there were Pac-12 fans that did not want to believe that there was a real Big 12 alternative for Utah, for Colorado and Arizona and Arizona State. But as we now know, fact-based, it was absolutely an alternative to staying for an Apple deal based off of subscriptions. And what I see, I see really big parallels between Utah and UNC. What did we know about Utah? They weren't going to move from the Pac-12 until there were no other options. Until they were, they, they looked at it and said, this thing is flying apart, we gotta go. With the ACC, I mean, you, you lose your big dogs. I believe it's going to be Florida State, Clemson, and yes, Miami are going to get the calls to go to the big conferences. I don't think there's going to be much more movement beyond that because there's no other schools out there with the proper viewership, the proper football brand. I know I always focus on the football when it comes to realignment, but I only do that with the Big Ten and the SEC because that's the movement. That's the movement that's being paid for by Fox and ESPN. They're not they're not paying for basketball schools. They're not paying for powerhouse academic brands like Stanford. That's not what they're paying for. They're paying for viewership in college football. That is the number two most popular sport in America. The biggest market, entertainment market in the world. And that's what this all is. It's sports entertainment. NFL's number one. College football's number two. NBA, number three. College basketball is down a few rungs. All right, NCAA tournament, big time. Big time. We all know that's big time. But the regular season of college basketball really isn't. So when you hear people wanting to say, well, you can take the viewership of UNC's college basketball, which is really good, and they want to equate that with college football viewership, it's not the same. These media companies can't charge the same level of advertising for that that they can with college football. The same money cannot be generated from that viewership. Not right now. Not right now. Maybe if this thing is built correctly, maybe if Brett Yormark is right and we haven't fully tapped the potential of college basketball. So one day it may get there, but right now it's not. And so all this reporting, all the speculation, everything, everyone's trying to deny or not even look at the fact that the Big 12 is a very viable option for UNC, for NC State, because the Big 12 would take both. And by the way, they would take Duke as well. They would take Duke as well. Now, if you peel into the viewership of UNC, the football viewership, the viewership that matters, the viewership, the only viewership that matters in realignment, especially with the big two. But if you dig into that viewership, what do you find? Last year, the viewership of UNC was under a million viewers, uh, uh, under a million viewers a game, under a million viewers a week. Year before that, just over a million. Year before that, 
pretty well above a million. Not SEC numbers particularly, not Big Ten numbers, but those kind of numbers fit very well in the Big 12. Look at the Big Ten of the SEC. Oh, you got to start. You got to start, you know, using all kinds of alternative math to make that work. And look, I don't, I'm not sitting here calling Ross Dillinger a liar or that his source has got it all dead wrong. I'm not. I am sure there are presidents within the Big Ten and the SEC that would absolutely love UNC in those conferences. But that's not about football. That's about academic prowess. That's about a lot of other things. That's not football related. So the way I feel about it, me and Ross Dillinger, I think in, in some respects, we're both kind of right. I think what Ross is hearing is that, hey, the, the people within these conferences, that is their number one target is UNC. I'm here to tell you that Sports Illustrated is kind of on to something when it comes to the market. And I've talked about it many times on this channel. ESPN and Fox aren't exactly rolling in the dough like they used to be. ESPN, for example, uh, their, what they're worth, their, their valuation the last 10 years has been cut in half. The value of ESPN as a property has been slashed in half in the last 10 years. That's horrific. And they're still making a plenty of money. They make billions a year. But their growth has stagnated over the last couple of years. That is not good. What I believe what, e what Disney has with ESPN is a depreciating asset. That's what it looks like. That's what all the numbers say it is. And I think they're going to do everything they can to streamline costs. To bolster ESPN as much as humanly possible. That way they can sell it off. For a huge profit. Sell it off to Amazon. To Google. To Apple. One of the huge tech companies that dwarf Disney. In the money that they can spend. Their capitalization. It's. That's where I believe it's going. That's why. Disney is focusing on making ESPN a direct-to-consumer product. Because it fits right in line with Amazon or Netflix or whom, whatever big, huge tech company really wants to make a big impact and a big entry into live sports. They've all dipped their toes a little bit into it. And they all have the money. To buy ESPN. Hell they got the money to buy Disney over and over and over again. You know. <laughs> Jeff Bezos has that in his sock drawer. It's not a big deal. And if that's correct. And you're trying to streamline your costs with ESPN. The last thing you want to do. Is put a dilutive product into the SEC. Make it a hundred million dollars a year. That just makes you harder to sell. You're trying to do every little thing. Even down to the small level. To make. ESPN as profitable as possible for as big a sale as possible. That's what I believe is the big picture. That's why I don't believe UNC, even though there may be presidents and people within the SEC and the Big Ten that would love UNC. I don't believe the media companies are on board with that at all. Now, having them go to the Big 12... Oh, that's a win for ESPN. That's a win for Fox. The UNC won't do that. They ain't going to the Big 12. No way. They'll just stay in the ACC. And that's what the speculation is, right? They're just going to stay in the ACC and rebuild it around them. Folks, that, that university doesn't have that kind of power, that kind of stroke. They don't get the kind of viewership that you can build a conference around that's going to make the same money as the Big 12. And I understand. There's a lot of people out there in ACC fantasy land. They look at the Big 12. And they're like, come on, Cincinnati. Come on, Houston. You know, TCU, some small private school. Baylor, Tech, Oklahoma State, Stillwater. Iowa State in the middle of nowhere in a cornfield. You mean to tell me, you mean to tell me that y'all are worth so much more than these ACC schools? 
<sighs> it's not even really about what the Big 12 is worth, especially on the individual brand level. I can't make a big case that TCU is so much more valuable than Virginia Tech or Virginia. I can't do that. Louisville is a hell of a school, hell of a program, hell of a sports a athletic program they got going on there. I can't say that Iowa State is so much greater or Texas Tech. Can't do that. It's not what it's about. It's about what does ESPN and Fox value? Those are the two big media partners of all this shit we've been talking about. The big two is ESPN and Fox. And what do they want? They've both invested long-term and heavily into the Big 12. And they did so, and, and you'd absolutely be right to say this, because the Pac-12 turned them down. The Pac-12 had better brands. Oregon, Washington, Utah. Absolutely. But once they got turned down, and they were wanting insane money without Southern California, once that happened, then they offered the same money to the Big 12 without Texas, without Oklahoma. And they got that deal done. Because what do they realize with the Big 12? Regardless of the brand, the overall value of the Big 12 and the viewership they get playing amongst each other is really good. It really is. It's not, it's not dog shit at all. Now, I think they would have rather have had the Pac-12 with Oregon and Washington. However, that was not meant to be. So, the, did the Big 12 get lucky? Did they, but yes, but they also maneuvered well. They understood what was going on. Endeavor, who we partnered with, understood what was going on. And went for that deal and got it. Now what's going on with you? Once your big dogs leave, does ESPN want to stay involved? No. And if even if they do want that content, I do believe ESPN doesn't want to lose all that ACC content. But they're going to offer you less money because you're just not worth the same amount without your big dogs. And because you're the last conference that's going to be coming to this realignment table, you're going to get kicked in the junk unfairly. But that's just what's going to happen. How much less money are you going to be willing to take per school built around the U UNC with a lot? I'm sorry, there, there's just not a lot of viewership out there. UNC is not horrible viewership when compared to other Big 12 schools. Compare it to Big 10 and SEC, it's not good. It's not on that level at all. I, I just don't understand how you can't see the parallels and what's going on with the ACC Compare that to what happened with the Pac-12. They're there for you. You're going to get lowballed by any potential media partner once the big dogs leave, once ESPN refuses to opt in till 2036 and you're done in 2027. Because in 2027, you're going to see schools flee to the Big 12. Why not? <laughs> You're not going to lose any money. You're going to gain a media partner in Fox you don't currently have. So actually your exposure goes up. ACC Network? I'm sorry. That's on a death spiral. Just like all the linear cable and satellite providers. They're on a death spiral. Hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Desubscribing. Every year. Every year. Why do you think everyone, every network worth its salt is trying to get into streaming? You know, I don't give a damn what network. BET has a streaming option. AMC, they've all laid the groundwork. Every one of them. To, you know, P, that's what Peacock is. That's what Paramount Plus is. Because NBC and CBS know that the whole linear thing they've enjoyed forever is dying. And the world is moving to streaming. And they're trying, and all the networks 
that have been on the linear model in the linear bundle, all of them are trying to hit that escape hatch and make sure they're not going to get ran over when the bubble of the linear bubble essentially finally bursts. They don't want to be the last one holding that seat because whoever is the last ones in there that don't have a viable streaming platform, they're dead. They're dead. They won't exist anymore. You don't believe me? Ask anyone who was anywhere associated with the music industry once streaming took off there. Tons of companies went under. A lot of people lost their ass because they didn't see the future that was right there in front of them, smacking them in the face. And all that ACC money that all these schools get is based off of what? Linear cable subscriptions. ACC network, carriage fees. <laughs> and that model is failing. That's why ESPN's going to get the hell out of it. They're trying to get the hell out of all of it now. <sighs> and we'll, and finally, would the would UNC go entertain go into the Big Twelve? You bet your ass they will. You bet your ass they will. Utah did, Colorado did, Arizona State. A lot of those schools didn't want to go. They didn't want to go to the Big Twelve. They liked their little prestigious universe, you know, university being in this prestigious Big Pac Twelve conference. There's prestige in the ACC. A lot of those schools don't want to leave it. There's politicians within North Carolina that doesn't want UNC going to the Big 12 or anywhere else. But at some point, the ACC stops being viable, just like the PAC did. And I've really thought about I've really thought, how can the ACC survive? Because I got nothing against the ACC. You know, I, I didn't have the contention that I had with the pack. But it's starting to get that way. And I know the closer we get to the end game here to win, the Big 12 does get to pick off your schools. ACC schools can have that choice when to leave and where to leave too. Which leaves, like I said, UNC. Will they do that? Well, they want to make media rights money. It's very important. And if you can't make or can't get entry into the Big Ten or SEC because the big media companies don't want you there, then what other choice is there? Staying in the ACC is not going to be an option because you're not going to get the media rights money to keep you relevant. But you can go to the Big 12 if you're UNC Get the full payout, 31.7. You're not going to be offered 31.7 from anyone anyone else. All right, the ACC, no one's going to give you 31.7 for that collection of schools. It's just not going to happen. The Big Two would just, like I've said before, would love to just roll you right into the Big 12. Fox would love it. They're paying 10, 11 million per school. Super cheap for them. Not a problem. It's not a hundred million per school. It's ten or eleven million per school per year. All right, they don't get as much of the content as ESPN, but that's okay. They'll get what they want, and especially the basketball end of it. ESPN, fine with paying you twenty per, twenty per, and they get plenty of games, both football, basketball, and all the other sports. You know. That's a ton of content they would like to keep for ESPN Plus, and it just makes all the sense in the world for them to do that. And then eventually they sell to one of the big tech companies, and it looks great on paper. Hey, look at all these markets that, and all these schools that we have covering coast to coast, SEC, Big 12. I don't know. This shit just makes too much sense. And everyone who's pushing back on that, just sounds like a bunch of Pac-12 people. And it turned out they were all wrong. They were all wrong. This channel, Numbskull News, was the one that was right. I don't care about being right or wrong. I'm just talking about what's logical 
and illogical. And if you put everything together, the market, streaming, death of the linear bundle, when you put it all together, what does that tell you? It tells you that there's not going to be a shit ton more realignment from the big two. It could be quite a bit more for the big 12, which of course, that'll be my next video. What the big 12, how many teams are they going to get? from the ACC. What is actually possible and what is fantasy land? Anyway, until then, thanks for watching this crap and I'll be back with some other crap later. Bye.